Yes, I know. Everybody else has already done their Luigi's Mansion video, but let me ask you this. Did they have the really cool figure for Luigi's Mansion statue in their video? I don't think so. Wow, do you remember Halloween? That was like two weeks ago now. There was candy, chocolate, trick-or-treaters. I was dressed up as Cat in the Hat. But more importantly than any of that, the best part about Halloween was Luigi's Mansion 3 dropped on Nintendo Switch. Perfectly in time for the- well, actually, if you ask me, it was a little too late. Perfectly in time for the spooky season. And I loved every single freaking second of the- well, that's a lie. I didn't- <laughs> there was one- just one entire floor, one level in the game that I couldn't stand. But the rest of the game was really great. The story has Luigi once again falling for a fake mansion prank where he brings his entire family to a haunted mansion only to get captured and then he has to save them. I think at this point, Luigi is just trying to find an excuse to be a hero. <laughs> but regardless of that, they ride the bus to the mansion. Luigi's sitting on his own because... I guess no one likes Luigi. <laughs> but they check into the hotel, they find their bedrooms. Apparently Mario still isn't <laughs> staying in the same room as Peach. I swear Peach secretly does like Bowser. The animations throughout the entire game, it's freaking fantastic. It looks like a Disney Pixar movie in the cutscenes, and then even the animations in the game look really cool. Like initially they stood out to me right away. You go up to the lobby and you talk to these ghosts in their masks, and when you turn Luigi around and walk away, you can see the skepticism on his face. Like, Oh, I'm pretty sure that guy was a ghost. <laughs> and then throughout the mansion, anytime Luigi gets scared, which is just about every five seconds in the game, the way he reacts to it and then walks away shivering. Ah oh, man, just the work that went into all of these animations, it's just outstanding. It actually feels like a brand new generation of Mario game, just in the way that it looks and the way it's animated. The entire thing was visually stunning. Anytime you ended up outside the hotel and you could see the scenery around, the mountains, the trees, the purple and blue skies, it just looks so great. And then don't get me started on inside the mansion. Oh, here I go. <laughs> Every single floor was a completely different theme. I don't want to ruin too many of them because that was the most fun. On each floor, which was essentially a level, you had to work your way around the rooms trying to find the next button to throw in the elevator to make it to the next floor. And the thing that glued me to my switch and drove me along the entire thing was just wanting to get that next button to see what the theme of the next floor was. And a lot of them made sense. <laughs> I mean, they were all fantastic. Like there was a gym and fitness inspired floor and then like a concert inspired floor. But then you also have really off the wall wacky ideas like a pirate themed floor where it's like you're actually exploring caverns and a pirate ship. I really loved the movie floor. That might've been my favorite floor for sure. Just because they could do so many different things with it because you were on a movie set. So they could take you to medieval times or anywhere they wanted on the movie set. That floor by far had my favorite boss battle. Not only for the game, but just one of my favorite boss battles in general. It was really cute. Man, what else can I gush about? The physics of the freaking backyard, the gameplay in itself is so much better than the first one. So obviously you can suck things in, you can <laughs> blow things away. You also have a weird light thing, which if you shine on objects that are there, but not actually there, it will reveal them. You can get into secret doors this way or get secret items that way. You also have the ability to like blow a bunch of egg down underneath your feet and gust yourself up. You have unlimited amounts of plunges, which you can throw at things and then suck up the rope that it's attached to and then yank whatever that thing is towards you. I like using that on the crates in the boxes and then smashing them into other objects and destroying the environments and so much of the environment you can interact with too. They have made so many tiny little assets, little things that you can just suck up into your vacuum and a lot of them react in different ways like when they hit the vacuum and then need to try and like squeeze their way through and get up and then money flies out. Which that's my first complaint with the game by the way. Unless I'm missing something and I finished the game so I don't think I am. I was a collector obsessed person during this entire game. It it took me 12 hours to finish a game that I could arguably probably finish in six hours, but I spent so much time exploring every nook and cranny of every floor, sucking up every note, coin, dollar, gem, brick thing that I could find because I wanted money, money, money. I was trying to get as much as I could. And about halfway through, I started to think, when, when am I going to spend any of this? And then you unlock the ability to buy dog bones for like a thousand, which if you die, your little ghost pop pop, which I think is in here, will come and eat the bone and bring you back to life. And you can store up to 
five at a time. You can also spend a thousand coins to find boo ghost finding thingies, and that will help you find some boo ghosts. And then, uh, I, I think there was one more thing you could buy, but I didn't buy it because it was pointless. I kept thinking I was saving money to buy upgrades, like maybe I could suction things in better, or maybe I could just have different abilities. Maybe I could actually jump properly and not just bunny hop. I feel like there was a lot more they could have done there because the game is literally littered with collectibles and money to find, and I have nothing to spend them on. Nothing. I only died in the game in one part, and that was in the level I freaking hated, and we'll get to that in a second. But still, after that level, I didn't need coins anymore. It was pointless. So I, I ended up not collecting things anymore, not really caring anymore, because why am I wasting my time if I can't use these coins? I thought that was really weird. But it is still fun to interact with the world and try out things, even if all you get from it is money that you don't need. You'll never know when you'll find a little secret or Easter egg or one of the actual collectibles that I liked getting, the gems, which were always themed to the floor, like the music floor, the gems were music notes and so on. You never know what you're gonna find. You might stare through a telescope, be admiring the scenery, and suddenly a rare ghost will pop in your vision and you have to catch him. Or you'll find a golf course thing and blow one of the golf balls in and get nothing! The game is just oozing with so much charm though. I love the ghosts. I love that the ghosts in Luigi's Mansion all have very different personalities. And not even just the bad guy ghosts that you battle. Like the blue ones are obviously more whimsical. They group up together and they wear things like sunglasses or they read newspapers. They remind me of ghosts like in Ghostbusters. Then you also have like your giant red ones and they're more hot-headed and just want to do damage to you and they're not fooling around. There were so many different enemy ghosts to fight throughout the entire game and mix in all the different boss battles because there was a lot. Just the combat with these few simple mechanics of flashing a ghost and then sucking it in. That simple gameplay never got old just because of the variety of things you had to do with it and the variety of ghosts you had to combat throughout the adventure. Okay, the game isn't without its faults. And why is it? Why? freaking is it that every game, the water level in the game is always the worst one. It's the worst one in Luigi's Mansion 3, and you don't even have to go in the water. At no point do you submerge yourself in Luigi's Mansion and swim. There's just water around, and it inherently makes it a terrible level. So you sit on this rubber ducky floaty thing, and you need to use your vacuum controls to suck, which will like bring you towards whatever you are sucking towards, or blow, I hate how many times, or blow away from like walls and stuff to push yourself away. But here's the part that's so frustrating. For some reason, the controls in this part of the game flip from how they are in every other part of the game. So that if I was like here as Luigi in this boat, imagine me in a boat, right? And I press left on the Joy-Con, it would take me to here and then it would hard lock all of a sudden and it wouldn't let me go any further for like no friggin' reason. And weirdly, if you wanted to go further, you then had to press right. Now you would think, oh, ladies and gentlemen, that going right at this point, considering you press left to get here would send you this way. Nope! It switches over so that right will send you the rest of the way around. It was bad enough just trying to navigate my way through the level, but there is a boss fight at the end, and oh my gosh, this is the worst boss fight. This game so far has had the best boss fight I've ever had, or one of, and then the absolute worst. This is the trashiest boss fight. I never want to go through it again. I ended up rage quitting the game one night and I had to do it the next day. The next day I woke up and then Kim and I filmed this. I'm a, literally about to have a friggin' aneurysm and I can't... I'm just gonna... Sh I have to somehow get away from him when I'm literally too slow to get away from him. I can't turn to get away from the spikes right now. I can't even begin to describe how infuriating this boss is. I don't think I've ever raged so hard. The control scheme in this game is completely broken and for the most part it's been fine and you can get around it, but I can't move away from these spikes! And I went into the spikes. And that's, that's game over. Holy crap, this is awful. Here's how the control should be. <laughs> if I'm here and I'm holding left, left should just spin me around and around and around and around and around and around and around. And if at any point I wanted to go right, I'd press right and now I'll go around and around and around. Anyway, uh, so that sucked. <laughs> but it was the only part of the game I didn't like. That entire level. <laughs> I didn't even talk about Gooigi. That added so much depth to the game too, being able to control a second character. The only thing that sucked was for the first half of the game, I didn't know that I could get rid of Guiji once I spawned him. If I double click the right thumbstick, he would disappear. There was this one point right here where we're sat on this like platform that we sunk into and I couldn't get out for like 10 minutes. I had to message stupid Sean and be like, hey, how do I get out of this? And he's like, get rid of Guiji. And I was like, 
Oh. But when you're actually using it the way you're supposed to, and the way that these two characters interact to solve puzzles, there's some areas that Gooigi can go into that Luigi can, and vice versa. It's just a really nice dynamic to the game that helped keep the progression through the game really fresh. Just a fantastic game all around. And I want to talk about the multiplayer, because I played that yesterday for the first time. <laughs> Before I do, this has been sat here this whole time. So first four figures, they did send me this. I don't know if first four figures saw my unboxing videos where Silly Steven's been sending me these but they did reach out to me in my email and they were like hey can we send you the luigi's mansion one and i was like hey yeah you can and how about that zelda one <laughs> so yeah really freaking cool oh they put a little ladder in here they put it to wood dear wood thank you for joining the first four figures family we're honored to have our latest release luigi's mansion 3 luigi and polterpop collector's edition to be a part of your valuable contents and be shared among your followers the statue before you is the result of many talented and passionate people coming to build something they truly believe in through the support of you and first four figure fans oh my God. It's got the pop pop! It's got the pop pop! It looks exactly like him in the game! I'm really bad about leaving things sealed, but. Wow, it smells. It smells really nice in there. I don't. I can't. Ow! Oh, my eye! Oh wow, this is heavy. This is legit. This is a thick battery. Jeez, what? This isn't a double A. This is like a. This is like an A. Which way is on? That's on. Oh! <gasps> Oh, and his tank lights up? What? Oh, his shoes look great too. It's all gloss. And there's like, there's like a, this is so incredible. I adore this. I love that the carpet is like pulled up too from the way he's like, thank you so much for sending me this guys. This is so cool. Actually, a lot of first full figures are actually pretty pricey as I'm sure you guys know, but this one's actually really reasonable. I think they made this a really great price. Like for its size, its weight, its quality, its craftsmanship. It feels weird saying that $100 is cheap, but for this, that's honestly a really good price. Oh, and the I mean, of course it lights up, but I didn't notice. And I like that it's a different shade. It's a yellow light. Oh my God. I'll have a link down below if you want to grab one. If you are thinking about it and you, you leave here today and you decide later on, you know what? No, I will grab one. Do me a favor and come back to the video and click on my link. It's actually physically clicking my link that helps me, so. Buy one. All right, I said I wanted to talk about the multiplayer for the game. It's really fun. If you haven't tried it, I didn't actually, I didn't even realize it was going to have multiplayer, but what they did was actually pretty brilliant when it works, which is usually when you're playing with people that you know and you can talk to. So the game is set up where you're in a randomly generated mansion and you can pick the amount of floors that you want to explore and you have to clear every ghost on the floor as a team before you can move on to the next floor. Sometimes there's objectives like running around trying to find toads and bringing them back to a central location, but for the most part it's, you know, capturing ghosts, completing objectives as a team and then moving on. But they added a load of extra things into it, like you can actually find items, power-ups, things that help you that aren't in the actual game. Like you can find glasses that help you see the invisible things that you can bring to light. You can also get a better vacuum that's not in the game. It's like a lightning vacuum that I guess sucks things in better. I never actually got to use it. But yeah, it's really fun in concept. However, just trying to play it on your own with randoms is kind of insufferable because Nintendo refuses to use in-game voice chat of any kind. And since it's objective-based, it's really frustrating when you can't communicate. You can use the D-pad to say thank you help me or over here but then you gotta hope that a the people are paying attention and b they even know what you're trying to mean by some of those things you can get trapped while you're playing you can get tied up in a rug or you can get a fake door opens up and pins you against the wall and while it's pretty easy to spot those fakes and avoid them that doesn't stop people you're playing with being idiots and walking into them and you can't free yourself of course you can ignore them like they do to you because when you accidentally end up getting caught if you just sit there spamming help forever and no one will come to help you because they don't care. The worst part is there's there's things like this platform where everyone has to stand on the platform and get out their Gooigi and once everyone's done that it opens the door to move on to the next area that you need to go to to complete the level and there was like this one time right here where there was three of us standing on here with our Gooigis and this one guy refused to come and help even though we kept spamming over here he was walking around on his merry way sucking up coins and doing I don't know what but essentially the time ran out and we failed. Man oh sometimes there's a locked door and like this guy had a key and he was like walking around with it strolling up and down hallways like nobody's business and I'm standing there like over here over here over here I had no way of saying hey bring the key here oh my gosh
So yeah, it's a little more frustrating than it is fun, but the mechanics in place, just the actual idea and concept is great. Whatever this video was, it is my video on Luigi's Mansion 3, but I did have this figure sent to me and like what a perfect video to put it in since I didn't do my video yet. But also, it's such a great game. I would recommend playing the first one at some point, but it's not like there's a story that carries over at all. There's nothing you need to know. Luigi is an idiot. He takes everyone to a mansion. They all get kidnapped and you need to help them. If you liked this video, then you should probably Probably like it you should hand flip on that subscribe button if you haven't already and if you already have and you're already subscribed don't links in the description for this little guy <laughs>